The Bad Batch Season 3 trailer just dropped, and with it, a brand new Star Wars revelation. Asajj Ventress, former Dark Disciple of Count Dooku Darth Tyrannus, is alive. And her death in the 2015 Dark Disciple book, which was one of the first ever canon books published by Lucasfilm, has officially been retconned, and Asajj Ventress will now appear in the third season of The Bad Batch. So what exactly happened to Asajj Ventress in Star Wars Legends, and why did they decide to retcon this? Why is this a major addition and change to Star Wars lore, and why will Ventress have a massive target on her back? Hey what's up guys, and welcome back to the channel. The Bad Batch trailer of course released earlier today, and with it, the big reveal that Ventress is alive. This is especially shocking, after Dave Filoni developed a story arc in the Clone Wars Season 6 and later 7, that would eventually culminate in the death of Asajj Ventress, as her redemption arc was completed after being cast aside by Dooku, eventually forgiving the Jedi, the clone troopers, and even sacrificing her own life to save a Jedi that had fallen to the dark side, and someone she had fallen in love with in Quinlan Voss. The the story is quite an iconic one to many Star Wars fans, as it gave Ventress a satisfying, albeit melancholy departure from the Star Wars lore, as she was given her own novel, but we never got to see the culmination of her story take place on screen. But it appears as if that has all been changed, and Asajj Ventress will now officially be returning to Star Wars canon in The Bad Batch. But with this, there are some major changes in the timeline as well as obviously Ventress's story, with us having many questions as well. Did she ever have some form of a relationship with Quinlan Voss? As we know that this is still a possibility, as Quinlan Voss was on the Jedi Trail in the Obi-Wan Kenobi series, with this confirming to us that the Jedi Master survived at least a few years into the reign of the Empire and passed Order 66. This is unique for Asajj Ventress, however, because of how her story progressed, with this being the first time we get to see her iconic yellow lightsaber on screen. In the book Dark Disciple, as well as an additional material, we learn just how important this yellow lightsaber is to Ventress, as it is revealed that she never imbued upon a crystal, but rather received it on the black market. Asajj Ventress found a deep connection to the yellow lightsaber in the lightsaber itself, following losing her twin red blades on Coruscant to Barriss Offee. Ventress said that she held a deep connection to the yellow because she no longer followed the path of the dark side, Revenge, in the Sith. Importantly in the novel, she even gives up her revenge quest against Ahsoka Tano and even Obi-Wan Kenobi, not wishing to see them die out. She even eventually gives up her revenge quest on Count Dooku, although she would be drawn back into the fold by Quinlan after his own embrace of the dark side. Ventress said that she was glad to receive a lightsaber that was not red in coloration, as she no longer wanted to live her life on a path of darkness. Ventress at this point even goes out of her way not to kill individuals when it is not necessary. Ventress was known for treating clone troopers especially harsh during the early days of the Clone War, killing clones in increasingly brutal and uncaring ways. However, it's revealed in the novelization that Ventress actually has gone out of her way not to kill any more clones, and to simply incapacitate them. Previously believed that Ventress was above them, and that the clones were merely insects that were bred for the sole purpose that she was giving them. When in reality, this shows her deeper connection with the light side of the Force. However, in the Dark Disciple novel, it is also very clear that Ventress is still not a Jedi, and still holds a major grudge against the Jedi Order for abandoning her and her Jedi Master to be killed by pirates. That is why she holds so much pride in her yellow lightsaber. It's a weapon that the Jedi Order no longer uses in mass, and it was revealed that the yellow lightsabers that the Jedi Temple Guards use are not actually made by them, but are rather hand down as a symbolic term that the Jedi that wear the mask of the Temple Guard will not have a unique identity, and that they simply represent the wider Jedi Order and the authority behind the Jedi Temple. Although Asajj Ventress obviously doesn't follow this path, her lightsaber to her and her path in life clearly distinguishes her path between a Jedi and a Sith, and her decision not to follow either. On her new armor, after becoming a bounty hunter, Ventress would even begin drawing snakes. Snakes in order to symbolize that although they were scary to look at and were quite intimidating, snakes were not evil, and were not inherently meant to do bad and kill in the wider galaxy but if provoked, they would indeed attack, but their natural state is one of peacefulness, following their own designated path while still being highly venomous if messed with. The importance of the Dark Disciple novel that has now been retconned, and the importance of the Bad Batch, is during the era of the Bad Batch of course. Count Dooku has now been killed by Anakin Skywalker on the Invisible Hand, likely over several years ago now, 
This is important, as Ventress's defining moment in Dark Disciple was her sacrifice. She actually sacrificed herself when Quinlan Voss was being tortured by Dooku's Force Lightning, getting in the way of him and Dooku, and eventually being literally disintegrated by the might of Dooku's hatred. Dooku pouring all of his loathing against Ventress into his Force Lightning that would eventually kill her. However, this is also important because she gave her life selflessly, choosing to save her lover and it's made very clear in this defining moment that Asajj Ventress not only saved Quinlan, but also fully embraced the path to the light side of the Force, becoming completely a light side wielder. Of course, not a Jedi, but somebody more akin to Ahsoka Tano, potentially a Jedi Ronin, if you will. This is especially impactful, as it's one of the most beautiful redemption arcs in all of Star Wars, a series that is known for them. Ventress began her path as a cold-hearted killer, but was eventually redeemed as an individual that used the light side, and who eventually sacrificed herself for the greater good, putting herself above others, just as Vader would do several decades in the future. The ending of the novel is especially tragic, as she was eventually buried by Quinlan Voss as well as Obi-Wan Kenobi on the world of Dathomir, being placed to rest alongside her sisters. A tragically beautiful ending, as the individuals in life that she believed that she hated the most in Kenobi and Voss were there to pay their final respects to their fallen ally and now good friend. Now that the Bad Batch has done away with that though, we'll have to be introduced to a new character arc involving Ventress. It's unclear if she's still a bounty hunter, but if she is, this would directly fall in line with where the Bad Batch is headed. We also know that Ventress does not appear in Star Wars Rebels or any of the supplementary material following the events of the Bad Batch. This is important because I believe Ventress would be one of the key individuals that Palpatine would want to be eliminated immediately. Palpatine even called for the death of Ventress before the end of the Clone Wars as he knew just how powerful in the Force she was becoming and how effective of a killer she was becoming with him ordering Dooku to murder her because he knew just how powerful the two of them could become if they joined forces. And Sidious believed that Asajj Ventress was a viable apprentice that could stand a chance to overthrow the Dark Lord. Whether or not we see the Inquisitors, or perhaps even Lord Vader himself directly pursue Ventress and the Bad Batch is unknown, but I do believe that she will be a force wielder of extremely high priority for Sidious. But anyway my friends, what are your thoughts on her return? What role do you think Asajj Ventress will be playing in the Bad Batch Season 3, the final season? Thank you so much my friends for stopping by the archives and the channel today, and may the force be with you.